Jefferson Davis, President of the Confederate States of America. We'd like to especially welcome you to our home during this fine Christmas time for a special. We wanted to share our life and our southern hospitality with you on this fine holiday season. After all, we're known for our southern hospitality. Come on in, we'll give you a tour. We have such a lovely home. Hi, I'm Melanie Hilkes and I'll be talking to you about prisons and hospitals. Isn't that lovely? What a charmer you are, Melanie. <laughs> Melanie, don't you have some place to be like those lovely prisons and hospitals? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I suppose I do. We'll be talking to her later. Yes, we will. For now, we're about to take a look at what our dear friend Charlotte O'Hara has been up to. Yes, I believe she has something to show us about our soldiers and communication. Yes, and their travel. You know, the North has more advanced train stations. Shut up, Melanie! No one asked you! Well, bless your heart. Now, let's go over to Charlotte. I'm here standing by one of our great railroads. Our soldiers may come here when they are given permission to go on leave, and that is very rare. There are many soldiers who are not physically able to be with their loved ones, but they are able to reach them by some other form of communication. The military telegraph service allows the armies to communicate the and exchange news. Thousand miles of telegraph wires strictly dedicated to the military. They have there have been rumors that the North have been tapped into the Southern Telegraph, but you know the South doesn't really use theirs as much as the North. So our armies have a bit of a communication problem. It is much more realistic and reliable than sending one of those men on a horse. However, our letter writing is still the main form of communication between soldiers and their families. Other forms of communication, believe it or not, are newspapers and photographs. Newspapers not only inform the families at home about the happenings on the battlefield, news in the papers also travel to the soldiers from the hometowns. No one is left in the dark about anything, isn't that right? As for travel, our railroads are in great shape. There are many, 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 many railroads in our Confederacy, as you can see from our uh, photograph here. Healthy competition exists between those who own our railroads. Before the war, we had supplies for that kind of travel. Mm, imported from England. Once the Union blocked us, there was no way of getting what we needed in order to sustain our transportation system. If it hadn't been for those damn Yankees, we wouldn't have any kind of issues. What with locomotive and tracks shutting down or getting the fuel needed to run our trains? And in turn, the fuel to the hearts of all supporters of this confined confederate establishment. Jefferson, I'm sure you could just print your chums some more shin plashes and they'll be able to afford what they need, right? Now, railroads aren't our only form of travel down here in the glorious south. Many travel by roads, especially if your destination is relatively close by. Some of our more famous roads include the Carolina Road, which is mainly used as a road for our soldiers. Welcome. Welcome. We're, We're here, here to, to talk, talk about, about recreation. Now, we know the soldiers were quite busy fighting and fighting and fighting, and they still are yes. fighting. Fighting, but we're sure to win. <laughs> South. Go the South. Oh. Confederate States of America. But, but, anyways, we're gonna talk to 
to you all about recreation. What do these soldiers do for fun? Exactly. So, they ate a lot and oh. had quite a lot of feasting with the food that they had. And they drank a lot as well. Mm -hmm. Doesn't enjoy that drink. There were a lot of musicians with all kinds of instruments and they would sing and they play a lot. A major event of some kind would be a dance arranged with some women. Oh. Um, they, they made craft items. Yes, uh, little boxes and figurines, you know, oh, how sweet. They smoked and chewed tobacco when they could get their hands on it. Oh, those men. Oh, many of them are keeping diaries, in fact. Yes, some of them, if they were able to read, would read a lot of books, like the Bible. The, the Bible is so, so popular. popular. <laughs> also, prostitution has been a major industry lately, wherever the soldiers are. Especially in the North. Mm-hmm. The North. Actually, in the North, the Union forces have the highest casualty rates of war. Well, they do with more than 50% of men being out of commission from venereal disease they got that had nothing to do with the actual fighting. Anyways. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> oh. so they played cards and gambled, you know. That's uh, the supplies they were able to get their hands on sometimes. Um, they were able to uh, get some money and buy some cards. So that's nice. Hmm, yes. So, basically, they were ordinary folk. They are. They fill their time the best that they can. They are fighting for our needs and for theirs. Mm -hmm. Well, here I am on location. Um, at uh, one of our prisons, and as you can see, uh, only a few months after the collapse of the tr uh, prisoner trade between the North and the South, our uh, facilities have uh, experienced a rather severe decline. Um, you, the soldiers are kept in very cramped quarters, and as you can see, they are all very thin. There is enough food, and uh, there has been a lot of disease. They aren't getting proper medical care. There's typhoid fever and tuberculosis and smallpox going around. Oh, it's not in the greatest shape. Are you sure, Melanie? We are the South. That looks quite nice. Pe people are dying. Oh, he looks fine. He's not. J Jefferson. Uh, Jefferson. He he's not. He looks very spry, healthy-like. Jefferson, he's starving to death. But there isn't even room for him to lie down in his tent. Could go out and lift a cow, not a care in the world. He has tuberculosis, Jefferson. Just a really beautiful place, isn't it? it? Smells like pee. Everyone seems to be so happy. I stepped on someone's foot this morning. Well, I'm certain that put a damper on the mood, Melanie. You really are a klutz. I hope you apologize to the poor old boy. It wasn't attached to anything. Well, now to our fan mail time, yes, so. All right. Yes, this one is from one of our boys in gray. Yes, um, he says, oh, he says he lacks our uh, basic needs and supplies like uh, razors and playing cards. Well, there's nothing better than a good, healthy beard, yes. Mm. Yes, uh, oh, here's, here's another one. Um, he says they've run out of some food because, oh, most of the good food spoiled at the beginning of the war, so they had to eat it before it went bad. That's just too bad. Mm, let's see, got another one around here. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, mm, yes. Here we are. Hmm. Oh. And this one says, disease is our biggest care, though. All I'd rather disease kill our boys in gray than those Yankees. Hmm. 
The biggest killer is infection. You know, up in the United States, they have the uh, United States Sanitary Commission. We don't have that. We don't have uh, trained doctors and nurses. But we do have heart. Yes. <laughs> 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 the worst is that the doctors and the nurses, the, they amputate you without any anesthesia. I wish they'd amputate you without any anesthesia. Well, you know what? You with your, your fancy southern houses and you don't have dysentery or diarrhea or typhoid or anything and the worst is the summers. The poor soldiers that gotta stay out there in this hot temperature and there's mosquitoes everywhere. It sounds like someone's a bit of a Grinch. Maybe you should just go up to the north with their precious little sanitary commission led by Frederick Law Olmsted. Maybe you should just go up there if you're so against us and our lifestyle. You know what? I am proud to be a southern man with his southern wife and his southern family. I am proud to live in the Confederate States of America. So maybe you should just go. Just go. Maybe I would. Well, I really hope you've all enjoyed our lovely vacation home. It really is wonderful. Yes, it is, and we're still supporting our boys in gray. Are you? Are you really supporting them? President Davis, our hospitals are a joke. Our prisoners are dying. Our soldiers are dying. We, we, they don't have enough food. You should be ashamed. My, my, Melanie. I really think you ought to go. Now, please. Just get out of here, Melanie. Get out.